You're watching Cycle Talk, Australia's motorcycle show. From sports bikes to motocross to cruisers, we love them all. We ride them, thrash them, test them, and sometimes we even crash them. On this episode, we're testing the bargain price CF Moto NK650. We're talking racing with Terry O'Neill. We ride the hot new Yamaha MT09 and look at some of the best accessories and gear. But first, let's get up to speed with From the Apex. MotoGP is back on with the first race at uh, La Salle in Qatar, running in front of 15 fans, three camels and all the crews. And it was the pre-season favourite, Yamaha's new signing Maverick Vinales, who picked up the win beating out Ducati's Andrea De Vizioso, that's three uh, second places in three years for Dovi, and the greatest of all time, Valentino Rossi. Yeah! Now some things did surprise us about the race. Johan Zarco led it for the first third of the event, and uh, Marc Marquez didn't make it onto the podium. And some things didn't surprise us, like Suzuki's new signing, Andrea Iannone, and then Carl Crash a lot, I mean, crutch low, both falling off. Some things don't change. Harley Davidson has announced the Street Rod, a more potent and much better looking variant on the Street 750. A bike so boring, we didn't even get it in Australia. What we did get was the Street 500, which has proven to be a really popular learner machine and a bike for people who want to own a Harley and only wanted to spend about $10,000. Now the Street Rod's going to offer a better chassis, better brakes, lots and lots more performance, lots more power, lots more torque, and lots and lots more cornering clearance, which is pretty important in a bike they're marketing as a bit sportier than the standard Roads to Style Street 500. It'll be available next month from about 13k. And now it's over to Ryan, who's been riding some of the new Heritage model BMWs. New Heritage. Okay. BMW Motor Ad Australia has invited me out to the International Festival of Speed to check out its heritage range of R90s. We're going to join Isla Man TT racer Maria Costello on a ride through some of Western Sydney's best and worst roads. Let's hope I can keep up. Miles Davis from BMW told me about the new range. Yeah, well, 2017 we've got a few new models. Um, started in 2014 with the R9T. Um, last year we got the R19 Scrambler. The latest model in the range is the new R9T Racer and the R9T Pure, which is more of an entry-level version of the R9T. And uh, in the future we've got the uh, Urban GS coming as well. We're in the middle of Western Sydney. We know some back roads that'll take us south and towards the base of the Blue Mountains. And there's some amazing twisty roads we're going to hit. We're going to go up to Springwood for lunch and uh, play around on some of the really good twisty back roads between here and the mountains and come back again uh, for the Arvo. Yeah, so a couple of summers ago, I actually had an R90 um, to use and completely fell in love with it. It brought back all those original feelings of when I first became a biker and was just out riding on the road. And whenever the sun came out, I had to go and ride this bike. It, it really is quite a sort of emotive bike, I felt, you know. It's got lots of character and lots of soul and I, I loved it. I just wanted to get out on it all the time. Well, out of the range, I, so far I really enjoy the Scrambler. Um, I think it suits a taller rider a bit better, wider bars. Um, it's a little bit of a bigger bike. I like the 19-inch front wheel on the road or the dirt. Um, it's not a real aggressive off-road bike, but it loves a dirt road and it loves a sandy beach, so it's a lot of fun. Um, you can cruise on it, you can punt along on it. It's, it's probably my favourite in the range. I'm on the new R9T which has a few updates for 2017. It now has adjustable forks and the steering angle is a bit more relaxed. There's some other subtle changes to the style too. All of BMW's heritage range now comes with switchable ABS and traction control. So 
The R9T Pure, like Miles said, has a few lower spec components, but it rides well. It's got conventional forks and alloy wheels, so you can save yourself a few thousand dollars if you're not too fussy. And this is the R9T Racer. It's the production model which spawned from Roland Sands' Concept 90 bike. It's got clip-on bars and rear sets, so it provides a sporty riding position. But the suspension and steering geometry, well, it's roadster-focused. It steers easier and it soaks up bumps. I reckon the style will attract plenty of new riders and the ride itself isn't too compromising. So I'm really hoping to put some more Ks on this bike in the future. The chest camera shows just how far forward you lean on the racer, so you get a good view of the tank in the shot. So if you haven't ridden anything like that before, the R9T Racer is a great introduction to that riding position. We've had a great day out here on the R9T and its variants. Each one offers something slightly different and it's all based on the same platform. Yeah, so much fun. See the heritage range of BMWs and others at your local BMW Motor Ad dealer as part of their new model festival, Saturday, April 8. For more info or to find your nearest dealer, visit bmwmotorad.com.au. This bike test is brought to you by Spitty on track. This is the new 2017 Yamaha MT-09. We like the old MT-09 and we were keen to ride the new one which has had a few updates and changes for 2017. So our first day on the bike at the Australian launch was on the road and then the second day on the track. So let's have a look at some of the updates Yamaha's made to the MT-09 for 2017. The new twin LED headlights are aggressive and good looking. The tail of the MT-09 has been redesigned for 2017. Compact and aggressive and it features a number plate bracket that comes off the swing arm. There's also a new seat and other design changes to enhance the brutal good looks of the MT-09. The MT-09 has three levels of traction control, one, two and off. It has a couple of different riding modes to give you a snappier throttle, smoother throttle, to make it easier to ride or more aggressive. So we're back after day one of the 2017 Yamaha MT-09 launch. And what a day it was. Really, really hot, it's like in the mid 30s. Um, so riding naked bikes is just the right, uh, right thing to be doing. And we've gone and ridden on some really, really nice twisty roads. And what we found straight off the bat is that the rear shock was really struggling. Now, they've done the front forks up and we didn't really play with them at all. Front forks were great. But during the ride, when we stopped, we put a bit more rebound damping into the rear shock and it really improved it. So we're really happy with the handling of these machines now. Now, they're not full on sports bikes. They're not gonna replace an R6 or an R1, but they're a lot more comfortable than that too. So you know, during the traffic sections at around town, they steer really well and they're a lot of fun away from the lights and things. If, you, uh, if you're in a position where you're allowed to do wheelies and burnouts, things like that, absolutely, heaps of fun. But the real big thing about the MT-09 is it's $12,299, up about $300 in Australia from the previous model. But for that price, you're getting an awful lot of motorcycle. The engine's a Yamaha Triple, the CP3, and it's a really, really nice motor. Three cylinders gives you a great balance between the spinning and the vibes of a four cylinder bike, but the grunt and the uh, fun of a, of a twin, it's a really good compromise and something everybody should try. Lots of fun, great motor. Behind this uh, fairly boring looking uh, engine cover is one of the most important features of the new MT-09. It's the assistance slipper clutch. Not only does it reduce the amount of effort required at the lever, but it helps control the back torque that's coming from the back tyre if you're too aggressive on your downshifts into corners. And it makes getting around uh, a track in particular, but anywhere where you're going hard and you're downshifting fast, much smoother and safer. Another great feature for the track in particular is the quick shifter. Forget using the clutch lever for upshifts, just pull on your foot and she'll change very quickly. For a full rundown on everything about the new MT-09, get a copy of Cycle Talk magazine. It's available in digital forms for the iPad, for the iPhone, PDF, or you can get a print edition as well. There's a lot more information about the bike in our full test in the March-April issue. Check it out, cycletalk.com.au. 
Now, to Yamaha's credit, they've brought us down to the uh, Motorsport Training Centre here outside of Wodonga, uh, where, where we've had a chance to ride the, the MT-09 on a racetrack. Now, it's not a, not a track bike, but if you do a few little things, like stiffen up the suspension uh, with the preload and, the, and then add a little bit more compression, rebound damping, do the same with the rear shock, add a, you know, wind up the preload a little bit. You've got no ride height adjusters or anything like that. You put a bit more rebound damping in and take off the hero blobs off the uh, bottom of the foot pegs. I've removed the rear uh, foot pegs as well because I was finding when I put my toes back on the foot pegs, it would, uh, my heels would hit the, uh, the rear pegs and it's a pretty easy thing to take them off. So what you end up with is, a, is an upright roadster on a track and of course handlebars aren't in the right position for that and the mover slide around a little bit on the seat more than I'd really like but it's a lot more fun than I expected on on a track and it really is a great way to learn to go fast or if you're just someone who wants to ride on the street most of the time but occasionally do a track day bike capable of it you'll have a lot of fun now, it's not an R1 it's not an R6 and it's never going to be but it's still going to be an awful lot of fun. And if you're coming, for, so if you're coming off your learner approved machines and you want a, a good big bike, well, this is a really good thing. I mean, 117 horsepower, and you know, so it's plenty fast enough. It's reasonably priced, and you can take it to the track. You can ride it to work. You can take it away with your mates uh, on a weekend. A very, very versatile machine. So. I'm really surprised at how good this thing is around the track and I think it would be an ideal thing to learn how to go fast and how to enjoy yourself. Now the other type of buyer for this machine that I really think should, should be seriously looking at these, but someone a little bit older who's just looking for a good all-round motorcycle to do almost everything on. To me the big things that you, you can't do on this bike that, that it sort of falls down at is really the touring angle. Um, you know, there's no weather protection, there's not much luggage, the, the pillion accommodation's pretty sparse. But that's why Yamaha has the MT-09 Tracer. It addresses most of those issues. So if you just want a bike for around town, day rides, commuting to work, going on, on winding road rides with your mates, MT-09 offers an awful lot of value and an awful lot of fun. So the new MT-09 looks pretty good straight off the showroom floor, but Yamaha's got a whole range of accessories to make it look even better. There's also parts to make it a little bit more functional, like a fly screen and a tank bag and a different seat. There's also clothing. So there's this hat, t-shirts, things like that. The Yamaha aluminium radiator side covers were inspired by the CP3 engine layout and replaced the original plastic part. They incorporate a blinker bracket for the original units or optional LEDs and feature the MT logo. The MotoGP style exhaust cover replaces the original exhaust cover with a mesh GP inspired unit. With the same mounting point it's easy to fit, is fully street legal with no change in noise or emissions and looks really cool. The MT-09 visor kit gives the bike a more stylish sporty appearance. It's been designed to match the new headlight so it looks great and is super easy to fit. The comfort seat replaces the original seat and provides extra padding and style. It looks great with an embossed MT-09 logo, has additional padding and extra cushion functionality on the back of the rider's seat. The Tank Bag City is one of a range of tank bags for the MT series. It mounts for our Tank Bag Ring Quick Lock System. Its normal capacity is 11 litres but it's expandable to 15. There's a map pocket in the top, extra pockets, carry straps and a waterproof cover. Genuine accessories bought with the new bike and fitted by the dealer have an extended warranty to match the motorcycle's warranty. And when you buy one from your Yamaha dealer, you can roll in all these Yamaha genuine parts and accessories into the same package deal and put them all on the same YMF finance plan. So talk to your Yamaha dealer about making your MT-09 that little bit special. You can keep up to date with everything Cycle Talk's doing on YouTube just by pressing the subscribe button just over here. We're on Facebook Live right now and we'd like you to head across to facebook.com slash cycletalk and put your comments and questions 
up on that page. And straight after the episode, we'll be having a live Q&A where we can answer some of those questions and have a chat about going touring with Cycle Talk in the springtime. We'd love your input on that. Just join us after the episode. This bike test is brought to you by Wiley X, absolute premium protection. You really only have to go back about 50 years and you'll find that the British machines reign supreme. And it was the Japanese who were the new kids on the block. Man oh man, how all of that's changed since what we have come to affectionately know as a universal Japanese motorcycle. Fast forward to the late 90s and it's the Chinese's turn. And like those early Japanese machines, the early Chinese machines of the 90s were good from far, but far from good. Well, that's all changed. And the bikes coming out of CF Moto's Chinese factory certainly prove it. CF Moto is China's largest exporter of ATVs. And the brand's been in Australia for about 10 years now. The company has sold roughly 15,000 vehicles in Australia in that time and approximately one third of them are motorbikes. CF Moto's NK range is the result of a cooperation between CF Moto and KTM in 2012. CF Moto assembles KTM small capacity Dukes for the Chinese domestic market. And it was through this relationship that KTM introduced CF Moto to Kiska Design, who's the company behind all of KTM's designs since the early 90s. So Kiska worked with CF Moto to design its 150cc NK and more recently restyling the 650NK. In this Wiley X bike test, we take a look at the CF Moto 650NK ABS. CF Moto produces two variants of the 650NK and the difference between them is the ABS brakes. I spent quite a bit of time on the CF Moto 650NK in mixed settings commuting, touring and wet weather. All up, we put about a thousand k's on the bike and really, there's a lot to like. In a later episode, we take the 650NK on tour with two open class naked bikes where it held its own in twists and on the open road. It impressed all three riders. The engine is a 650cc fuel injected parallel twin which competes pretty well on performance in its class. It gets off the line well, and it's a fairly torquey motor, so it's pretty easy to ride around town. The gearing is a little bit taller than some of the other machines in the category, but if you stick it out past 5,000 revs, it'll reward you. With its 62 newtons at 7,000 and 55 horses at 9,500 revs. The 650NK provides neutral handling, and it executes most low speed manoeuvres with ease. Obviously, at such a great price point, there will be a few compromises on the CF Moto, but really, they get a lot of points because there's some top quality components on this bike, like Bosch fuel injection, KYB suspension, Continental ABS, J1 brakes, and fairly decent rubber from CST, which is Maxxis. The J1 brakes provide solid stopping performance, and ABS works well, so you can really mash on that front lever. At times, you really need to, because the feeling through the lever could be better. The points go to CF Moto for minimising it with braided brake lines, and both brake and clutch levers are adjustable too. Up front, there's two 300mm discs with two piston calipers, and a 240mm disc with a single piston caliper at the rear. The suspension package is pretty good for all round riding and standard fare on most of the 650 learners. It's quite basic with some minor adjustment in the rear shock, but it's done its work admirably throughout the time the bike's been in for testing. Really, the only thing this bike's missing compared to a few of the other premium bikes in the segment is a slipper clutch. And the other thing I really want to talk about is the style. It's amazing. You wouldn't be surprised to see a Japanese or European logo on the tank. If this was CF Moto's design brief for Kiska, they've done a great job. It's touches like the cool and comprehensive instruments, the front brake master cylinder, underslung muffler, tank and radiator shrouds, LED indicators, headlight, tail light, and spoke wheels, which make the CF Moto not only fit in with the crowd, but stand out too. So what are the negatives? Well, compared to the 650 learners from Japan and Europe, 
there's still a little way to go refining the motorcycle's minor details. I think the biggest step forward could be made through improving the feel in the front brake lever and the seat could do with a little bit more padding. The gear shifter could feel a little bit more positive too, but really, that's it. CF Moto's Australian distributor, Mojo Motorcycles, provide great after-sales support. They sell around 4,000 vehicles per year and service over 100 dealers nationally. So really, there's a great chance that there'll be a CF Moto dealer near you. So the price for this 650 NK ABS is about six and a half grand. You can save about 500 bucks if you wanted to go with that uh, non-ABS model, but we wouldn't really recommend that. Uh, all up, this represents probably one of the greatest buys in Australian motorcycling. There's just so much value right here. CF Moto 650 NK offers practically everything else its competitors do. And while it may not be as refined, it's a huge leap forward for the Chinese manufacturer. And I reckon if things keep going the way they are, it won't be long until they're considered the new norm. This feature brought to you by Avon Tyres. In this video, we're going to take a look at Iro's ST701 full-face sports touring helmet. The first thing you notice is how light the helmet is, and I really like the fit too. There must be some smoke and mirrors in Iro's manufacturing process. The helmet weighs in about 1,500 grams, but really doesn't feel that heavy. So the vent system on the 701 is simple and effective. All three vents slide forward and backwards. There's no lateral movement. Sometimes the exhaust vent can be a bit confusing when you've got to move it side to side, uh, and that doesn't happen with this helmet. Yeah, great. If there's one area that I think the helmet could be improved, I think it could be with these two sharp edges. Um, it's a bit of a pain when you're off the bike, but it's a minor quibble. So as a sports touring helmet, a lot of them are starting to come with the internal tinted visors now. This was the first time that I've used it on a sports tourer. Um, I really liked it. I thought it was great. Uh, the other good thing is if you wear glasses or you wear sunglasses, there's still enough room inside there for you to fit them nice and neatly. Iro also provides a soft bag, chin windbreaker and anti-fog inserts. The other cool feature for tourers is the Bluetooth comms port. It's super easy to fit. The unit hides cables neatly within the helmet. So I've put over a thousand Ks on this helmet. I'm really impressed with it so far. The size and fit's great. Uh, the ventilation's really effective, simple to use. Um, yeah, so far so good. I'm really enjoying this helmet. The Iro ST701 is Cycle Talk's product pick of the week. It comes highly recommended from me. It's available in six sizes and more colours than you can poke a stick at. You can pick one up from better bike shops for about 700 bucks. This product review is brought to you by Wiley X, absolute premium protection. The Swan Super Series is starting again on April 8 and 9 this weekend at Sydney Motorsport Park. And we've caught up with the series promoter, Terry O'Neill, to tell us all about how he's taking this championship back to its roots. This year it's a three event uh, series six rounds over three events, so Saturday's round one, Saturday, uh, Sunday is round two. So we're still running a six round televised, nationally televised race series, but it's over three events. We've brought it back to something that is affordable, easy to compete in, and um, something that is attractive to privateer competitors. We cater for everything from beginners to you know, the national A-grade riders and that's the beauty of the series. The way it's structured is it looks after everyone. It's not aimed at beginners, it's not aimed at factory teams. It was an awesome to come down to the last lap and yeah, I'm happy to get a win when it's like that. It makes it feel much better. One of the things we've, we've introduced, uh, we do it mainly now in Queensland, but we will have in the middle of July, we'll have a Race Your Mates Day. The way it works is they're double spread out and they only race the competitors in that line. So you're not worried about the guys in front of you or the people behind you. When we were at Wakefield Park running the Race of Mates days, we brought on over 200 competitors over about four years into mainstream racing. The way we run our events and everything is to make it as, as, as user friendly as possible because there needs to be a ladder from ride days to entry level, to club level, to national level. And that's what we do. And at present, we're the only ones that do it. If you can't get out to Sydney Motorsport Park this weekend, catch the racing live on facebook.com slash fxsuperbikes.